All right, we're going to look at the DM42. I just got this um, based on lots of good things I'd heard. And I love the form factor. It, it's real small. I really like the screen a lot. And I like the simplicity of it. The HP 48GX blows it away in terms of power, but the downside is that comes with complexity. I feel like this is a more down-to-earth scientific calculator, but if you were doing a lot of hardcore engineering, I like that HP 48GX better for that. Um, but I'm really happy with this, so it's my go-to. Logan West has some great videos on this calculator. I encourage you to look him up. And if I remember, I'll put a link in my description. Um, so you want to dig deeper. But thanks to him for helping me figure some of the things out on here through his videos. And also um, lots of other, there's some forums and stuff that you can learn from. So, all right, let's get going. Okay, let's look at how we would use the solver. And we're going to solve this problem here. One thing about the solver on the DM42 is everything has to be on one side of the equation, equal to zero. So I'm going to take this and we're going to bring this over. So we start the same way we would do it with a normal program. And we go into the program. And then we go bring up our functions. Let's label it. I tend to put a period in front if it's going to use the solver. So that's just so I can differentiate the different types of programs. We'll call this uh, temp again, or this one's dot TMP. TMP. And on this, when you're in solver mode, you've got to declare your variables. So I'm going to declare an X, and then I'm going to enter this. So just like before, we recall the X to the stack, we multiply it, we take a 1 and we subtract it, then we have 1.03 to the x power, so we're going to recall another x, and we're going to do to the, oops, got to hit enter, and then to the, and that will be subtracted from what we already had. So now everything's on this side equal to zero. Hopefully you can visualize that. We then exit, and we go into solver. We tell it we want to use this dot tmp that we just made. And what's our starting value? Let's just say 1. Give it a start, and you hit x again, and it finds the solution. What if we want to use the solver for a multivariable problem? And let's clear this stack here. And we'll make a new program. So we'll go to, we hit period twice, go into the program and label it, let's just call this um, temp2. Being very creative here, can't you tell? So tmp and then 2. And we got to declare all our variables here. I'm using the solver menu because it's quicker to get to this mvar. It's also available under the program functions. It's just buried a few menus down, or a few screens down. So this is quicker. So we're going to need an M1, an M2, an R, and a, an FG. And you can see them showing up here. It's because I practiced, but let's pretend I hadn't done that. So our first one would be M1, and then we got to do M2, which is, and we're going to do R, and finally, we have our FG. If you do see it there, you can just click it. But again, I'm showing how it would be if I hadn't have done that. All right, so I get all those entered. Then we got to recall our M1. Oops. And we're going to then recall our M2. Oops, I keep doing that. Multiply them together. So we've done this numerator. Now we've got to recall R, and we're going to square it, and we're going to divide. So we've taken care of this. We've got to multiply all that by this 6.674 times 
times 10 to the negative 11. And finally, we've got to subtract our FG. So we're going to recall that FG and subtract it. All right, we've got all that put in. And we can exit now. We go into our solver. Select the program. Oh, I should have called it, te technically, I should have put a period in front of it using my approach. That's how I tell it's a solver program. The calculator itself doesn't care. Uh, let's use 10 for M1, 15 for M2. We'll use the square root of 10 for R. And I'm doing that because I'm being consistent with my other example, with the other calculators. And we want to solve for FG. We could put in a guess if we want. Let's just say 0. I think it already was. And we hit FG again. We get our answer. And if we wanted to take that answer and do anything with it, we could, uh, we could store it. It's saved under this FG. So let's say we did 5 times it. I just do 5 and then times. Um, if I'm going to hit exit and get out of that. Let's say later I'm like, oh, you know what? I actually needed FG times 10. I would recall it. It's FG right there. And recalls the variable, or variable and then it is valuable and then multiply it by 10. So those are stored in there once you exit the solver, which is nice. So you can just recall and grab any of those that you had solved for or entered previously. So that's slick. Okay, let's say we want to solve a system of simultaneous equations. We go under matrix to this simultaneous equation function. We have three unknowns, x, y, and z. And we start by going into matrix A. It starts at row 1, column 1, and we just put in our 2, our 4, oops, 6. Now it goes down to the second row, first column, 4, 5, and 6. And then our third row, we want a 3, a 1, and a negative 2. And once we've got that entered, we go into matrix B, which is our constants here. So we're going to put in our 18, a 24, and a 4. To get the solution, we just hit matrix X, and it will find our solution. We have a 4 for our X value, a negative 2 for Y, and a 3 for Z. Works really well, and that's quick. All right, let's say we wanted to solve this. And we want to figure out the value of the function when x is 7. And granted, you could just plug a 7 in and type it in. But let's assume we were going to do a bunch of different values. So the way you go about this is you, you actually make a little program. So when you want a new program, you just hit the period twice. And then I go into the program menu. And i got to give it a name. Oops. Still learning some of this. I'm going to go into label. And I'm going to call this, um, let's just call it temp, T-M-P. And we need to take whatever's on the stack, and we're going to store it into X right off the bat. We're then going to recall that X value. We're going to cube it. So we put a 3 on the stack, and we cube it. We're going to multiply it by 2. We're going to then get another x, put it on the stack, multiply by 3, subtract that, and then we're going to take a 33 on the stack and subtract that. We can now exit. When we put a 7 on the stack, we then execute our program, which is called temp, and we get the result, 632. Now let's say we want to take that and plug it in here. It's simple. We just take that 632 and we square it. We multiply by 0.75 and then we multiply by a half. We get our final answer. Okay, let's look at a vector problem here. And on this calculator, it works best to just do everything as complex numbers. And in my experience, my limited experience, but all the vector functions work with complex numbers including unit vector. So we're going to jump in, I'm going to bring up the mode and I'm selecting the menu twice so that it stays here. 
and let's do our first one. So we have a 75, 30, put that as a complex number. We have 50, oops, I want to go to polar. We have 50 at an angle of negative 60 degrees. Make that as a complex number. I've got that zero in there. I didn't want to do that, so I'm just going to swap this. So it swaps those two, and then I'm going to roll everything down. So we've got our first vector there, 80.8 at 21.8 degrees, and then we have the second one here. I'm going to go back to rectangular mode, and we want to do this vector here. So we have 3 negative and 5 negative. Put that in complex mode. I want the unit vector, so I go back into matrix, go down a menu, hit UVEC for unit vector, multiply it by 40. So we now have our three vectors, and we can just add those together. So we've got our final answer there, and if we wanted that in polar, oops, we could go back into modes and hit polar, and there's our polar result. All right, let's look at converting degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal degrees. So you do 37 point, and then you put in the minutes, and you also put in then the seconds. You just have the decimal once, but the 28, the calculator knows that means minutes. The first two digits are minutes, and the second two are going to be seconds, or the, even beyond the second two are seconds. So we're going to do convert, and we're going to go to hours, which is decimal hours. So, or... It's, it's doing it in terms of time, but obviously it works with degrees as well. So 37.472 degrees. If we want to go the other way, 76.543 degrees, we want to convert to degrees, minutes, seconds. We would have 76 degrees, 0.3, or sorry, 76 degrees, 32 minutes, and 34.8 seconds. Really simple to use. Okay, let's look at doing some conversions between polar and rectangular. We'll do degrees and we'll do radians. I really like this calculator for this sort of thing. Well, I really like the calculator, period, but I feel like it's extra good for this. <clears throat> so if we want to go from 10 and an angle of 60 to rectangular, the only odd thing is you put the angle in first and then put the 10 in. And so let's do that. So we do 60... And then we put in our 10. We're doing a conversion, so we use this convert menu. And we're going to convert to rectangular. So it's 5 in the x direction and 8.66 in the y. And let's do the other way around. If we're doing polar, we've got to put this y coordinate in first. And the reason for that is that way the 3 goes with the x and the 4 goes with the y um, with regards to the stack. Let's convert it to polar. So that is the same as a magnitude of 5 at an angle of 53.13 degrees. And now let's look and do a couple more here. So this time in radians, so let's switch our mode to radians. And we have to do 2 pi, multiply those, divide by 3, and then take the negative. That's our radian angle. Our magnitude's 2, and we want to convert to rectangular. So we have negative 1 in the x direction and negative 1.732 in the y. And last, we want to do this. So we're going to do the square root of 3. Oops, I actually messed up. I want to do the 1 first. And then I want to do 3 square root, but I want the negative. And we're going to convert to polar. So it's a magnitude of 2 in our radian angle is 2.618 radians. If for some reason you had meant to do that in degrees, it's cool, you can swap that real quick and do a convert. This actually has a nice little convert to degrees and convert to radians. So we want to go from radians to degrees, so we're at 150 degrees. I really like the way it does those conversions. Alright, let's do a few more things here. 
do the square root of negative 72. We do 72, negative, square root. We get our answer. Oops, I'm still in radians. I didn't want that. I wanted degrees. And notice it's dynamic. I didn't want that. I wanted rectangular. And we get our answer. 8.485i. Really like how that works. i to the 15th. If we want to do i to the 15th, we do a 0 for our real part and a 1 for our i. We turn it into a complex number, so that's our i. And then we got to do 2 to the 15th. So the answer is negative i, or negative 1i. Let's do something a little more interesting here. We're going to do 29 for the real part, and a negative 29 for our imaginary. We're going to divide that by 7 plus 3i. Divide. Got our answer. 2 plus negative 5i, or 2 minus 5i. Find the roots. This is where this calculator is not so great. It's okay here because I have a program. I can execute a program called quad right here. And I'm sure you could get other programs, but we put a 1 in for our A. I think these are all going to be already in there. Negative 6 for B. And obviously if it matches, I could just hit this run stop. But 2, run stop. And I get my roots. X1 is 5.6. X2 is 0.354, and I have this discriminant here because sometimes that's helpful to know. So the discriminant is 28. And notice those same values are sitting here on the stack. I don't have any program to solve cubic, um, find all three roots. You could obviously put this into the solver and find them one at a time. It's not very efficient compared to something like my Casio or the Prime. That's all I've got. So hopefully that was of some interest to you guys. If you stuck with it this long, it was. And really like this calculator. It's a throwback. It's like a mashup. One of, one of my students said something like, oh, it's weird. It's like it's old and it's new. So they recognize the display as being kind of new tech. And the overall look of it as being old school. So anyway, we'll leave it there. With a couple happy penguins. Take care.